What you guys got another video? Microsoft have released a USB boot toolkit to fix the CrowdStrike issue. Now, the CrowdStrike disaster was one of the biggest computer disasters we've seen uh, in our lifetimes. Basically, what happened was every airline, every hospital, a lot of businesses uh, went down because they rolled an update out, uh, CrowdStrike, on their software, and basically it completely uh, rebooted the system and you got caught in a reboot loop with a blue screen. I have made a video on that uh, some days ago, but Microsoft have now rolled out a fix to actually fix this issue. And you can download this free tool and it will fix the issue if you're still having issues. The big problem was a lot of systems have a bit locker on them and this caused a major problem. So there is an issue here uh, that needs to be resolved. And if you've got hundreds, if not thousands of computers in a business, each one of those are going to have to have hands on them to fix this issue. And we're going to show you this PowerShell script that Microsoft have released to fix the issue. And I'll show that in more detail after a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Sales. If you're looking for a cheap Windows 11 Pro or a cheap Windows 10 Pro OEM key, then check out the links in the video description. All you need to do is create an account and then use my promo code, capital B, capital R, 09 and apply this to your order they will then send you your key and you will then be able to uh, use that key to activate your version of windows it's very quick and easy to do and if you need to upgrade from say a home version to pro version you can use that key also anyway i've downloaded the file from microsoft and what we're going to do here is we're going to extract it and this is exactly what you're going to get when you extract it so there's a powershell script right inside here and there's a readme file in the readme file, it just leads you to the page where you can read how to run this PowerShell script and how you can use it. What it, this is, is not anything that's too complicated. You look here, there's a lot of filler inside here, but mainly what it's going to do is allow you to boot to this uh, recovery image and remove that file that is causing the issue. There's also information on here about BitLocker and how you can uh, recover the system if it has BitLocker on the system. And it goes all into great detail in this script. And you can use either method. There's a couple of methods you can use on here, and I'll share that a little bit later on. What it's going to do is download the ADK WinPE files and installation files and add-ons, put them onto the system, and it'll create an ISO file for you. And you can then boot to this and then basically fix the problem. So let's go ahead and take a look at it here. So first off, what I'm going to do is copy the link to this folder up the top here. What we're going to do then is we're going to open up uh, PowerShell as administrator. So let's go down to the start button and type PowerShell right here and run this as administrator. All we need to do now is say yes to the user account control. And from here, what we need to do is do change directory because we're in the wrong directory, change directory to this location here, which is our desktop with that folder where we've got the PowerShell script in here. Now, all we need to do is go back to the folder, right click here and do rename and copy the name of the file. I've got the extension on here, which is .ps1 as well. Make sure you're showing uh, file extensions for that. All we need to do here is do dot backslash and that name of the file, and this will run the PowerShell script. Now, if you see something like this, you need to enable this feature to be able to run this script. So I'll quickly show you how to do that. Click Start, Settings, then go to System. And from here, we're going to come down to where it says For Developers. On the Developer mode, we need to enable this and turn it on. And then you should see a section down here saying PowerShell. And you need to just uh, turn on this feature right here, which is to run PowerShell scripts on your system. So enable this feature. You can turn it off afterwards. But once we've got this done, we can then go back and we can run that same command in that same location, which is dot backslash and the PowerShell script name. So I'm just going to do that. And now it will run perfectly fine. Once that's running on the system, it's going to download uh, and accept the Windows ADK license agreement. So you need to say Wi-Fi yes. And it's then also going to allow Microsoft to collect insights for Windows kits as described, you can say no here if you want to. I'm just going to say yes and let that run. It's going to now download and install ADK onto our system so we can then create the uh, WinPE file that we need. So let it go ahead and do that. This does take a bit of time, so be patient. I've speeded this process up. 
And you can now see that it's successfully installed the Windows ADK. It's now asking you to accept the Windows ADK license agreement. So we're going to say Y for yes here and push enter. And now what we need to do is quickly restart the system because we want the next phase to come up. So let me go ahead and quickly restart on the uh, system here. And once this reboots, we'll get back to the desktop and we'll open PowerShell up and we'll run that script one more time. And this should then download the ADK add-ons for us. So you might see uh, Windows is updating here. So just let that do its thing. And once that's done, uh, we can get back to the desktop and then we can do the uh, PowerShell script one more time. So we're back at the desktop here. All I need to do here is open up PowerShell one more time, run this as administrator here, and we need to go back and copy that path again. So I'm going to quickly do that and do change directory and go to that location. There we go. And now we need to copy that name of the file again. So I've already got that copied. So I'm going to do dot backslash and the name of the PowerShell script. And for some reason, you can see it's now downloading the ADK WinPE add-ons. And we need to let that do its thing. I'm going to say Y for yes. And it's going to allow Microsoft. We're going to go through the same process again. It's now installing the WinPE add-ons, which is what it didn't do before. I'm not sure why that happened, but it's now doing it. And once this is finished, it should give us a couple of options uh, to choose from. So we're just going to let that populate and then we can choose one of the two options that are available for this fix. And you should see something coming up on the screen saying successfully installed the WinPE add-on. There we go. And now what we can do here is we've got two options. The script offers two options for recovery. So the first option is boot into a WinPE and uh, basically is going to require you entering the BitLocker recovery key if the system disk is BitLocker encrypted. The second option is boot into a WinPE uh, configured in safe mode, and this will run the repair command after entering safe mode. This option is less likely to require a BitLocker recovery key. So if you don't have BitLocker installed on that system, then you can choose the option two. If you have BitLocker installed and running, you need to use option one. So we're gonna choose option two here, and we're gonna go through this motion of creating and adding the necessary packages. It's going to mount the WinPE image, and you can see it's going to add the necessary packages to that image. It's going to ask us, do we need to add any drivers? And we're going to say no, because we don't need to add any. If you do, you need to say yes and then add your drivers, but we're going to say in for no. And it's now going to save the changes and create our WinPE image for us. Once that's done, we should be pretty much good to go. It may ask us, do we want to save this to a USB flash drive, or do we want to save it to an ISO file? So I'll probably choose an ISO file here just to show you quickly. But if you need to put this onto a USB flash drive and boot to that USB flash drive, you can do. It's now successfully completed all of this. And you can see here now we get in that question, do you need an ISO file or do you want it to go to a USB flash drive? We're going to choose option one here, but you can choose which option suits you. And this will then create the ISO file. It's now available in this location here. So we need to go to that location. It is an hidden location. So you need to show hidden files, folders, and drives and be able to get to that location. So what we're gonna do here is go to this PC. We're gonna go C drive, and then we're gonna go down to users and then go to the user account. In this case, it's called tutorials and then app data. Then we're gonna go into local and then temp. And this is where your ISO file has been dropped and created. So let me go ahead and look for the ISO file inside here. And then we can drag this onto our desktop and I'll quickly mount it so you can see what it's basically doing. It's not doing a lot. It's basically going to remove that file, but it is a solution to a lot of people. Now, the big problem is you're going to have to go around and doing this on every single computer. And this is going to take some time for a lot of people that have got hundreds, if not thousands of computers on a actual network. So CrowdStrike has caused a major issue. Now CrowdStrike have also created an update for this to fix it, but it doesn't remove the file. You have to fix this yourself. And if you've got BitLocker, this problem is going to become much more complicated than without a BitLocker system. So let's go ahead and mount that ISO file now. And as you can see, there's loads of uh, languages here and there's just this little repair.cmd file here. Let me edit this file so you can see what's inside and what it's actually doing. 
all of this uh, tool is doing right here, you can see it's doing echo off and it's basically saying this will remove the impacted files and restore normal boot configuration. And it will tell you there on the screen if I boot to this right now, it's going to remove the impacted files, which is in uh, system root, system 32 drivers, CrowdStrike and C dash and that number dot sys file, which I showed you in the first video that I did how to move this uh, manually by going into safe mode and it basically changes the boot cd edit to forward slash delete value and then braces current and then space safe mode so it's basically just doing that simple thing there and then it shuts the system down so that's all that uh, WinPE file is going to be doing but it is a fix and it is released by microsoft so i'll leave a link for that in the video description and there's your iso right here now of course if you've got a uh, bit locker on the system you will need to use different methods to remove this from the computer anyway but that said just a quick video for today my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk quick shout out to my youtube members i appreciate the support have a lovely weekend and i'll catch you in the next video thanks again for watching bye for now